LHF it. Um, I suppose I, I need to come clean with you and confess. Yes, <clears throat> I, I love pickled onions. I can't help myself. I, with every meal, I have to have pickled onions. They're so nice. But you didn't watch this video just to hear me confess about stuff. You came to this video to hear about board games. And so I've got a little board game story. Way back in 2006, not long after I met my wife, um, who is French, we would pop over to France to see her family. And on our visits to like the news agents, um, I found this really interesting thing in the magazine section. You know, they do these magazines, these monthly ones where you buy um, the magazine and it's got a little part in it for a car or a dog. And uh, you build them and collect them and then put them together. Well, Atlas Editions were bringing out a collection of board games with the Asterix theme. And um, being an Asterix fan and kind of a board gamer at that time, I decided to start collecting them. Now there's 29 of them in total and they range from very ancient classic games like poker and dominoes and backgammon to kind of modern uh, classic games like Connect Four and Trivial Pursuit, Taboo and things like that. So what I thought I'd do is I'd share with you some of these games. I'll start with this one first. This one's Corridor Kid uh, which is Primarily corridor, but for kids. So let's take a look at it. And um, while the credits are running, I need to take a bit of magic potion. <laughs> Corridor Kit is a very simple abstract game where the objective is to just get your playing piece from one side of the board to the home side of the board. And you do this by either moving or constructing a barrier to hopefully block the other player. And the first one to arrive on the other side is deemed the winner. Setup for a four player game would look like this. Each player would receive four of these walls and they would also place their token on the opposite side of the board that they're trying to get to. So in case red here is trying to get to any of these squares over here and yellow is trying to get here, whereas green is trying to get here and blue is trying to get there. A two player setup would be practically the same, apart from each player would receive eight walls instead of four. You will choose your starting player at random and then play will begin. A player on their turn could do one of two actions. They can either move their piece or they can place down one of their walls. To move your playing piece, all you have to do is move it orthogonally one space. So in this case, I could move here, or I could move here, or I could move here. Never diagonal. If, for instance, there was another player in front of you, you can jump over them. Another example of this is if yellow was here, they would not be able to jump over to this space on the outskirts they could only jump over one piece. So they could jump to here, or they could jump to here. This would be the same rule as if there was a wall in the way. To place a wall, you just take one of your wall tiles and you place it so it blocks four spaces like so. There is one rule in regards to placing walls. You are not allowed to section off any part of the board so I could not do that and block the yellow in again doing this as well so this part of the board is separate from this part of the board that is an illegal move so you always have to have some way of getting from one side of the board to the other like so if on your turn you wish to place a wall but you have none left, the only option you've got is to move. As soon as a player reaches their home base, wherever it is, they win the game. And that's how you play the game. It's relatively simple. And that's why I say that 
Court Corridor Kids is a board game that everybody should be teaching their kids before they teach them chess. A kind of alternative to drafts. This is simple enough for kids to grasp. You've either got two choices, you move or you place a wall. And that in itself brings some really kind of like high level thinking. The game is really a mathematical puzzle of calculating how quickly you can get your piece across the board while interfering with the other player while they're interfering with you. And so it is kind of cold in that way. But if you play as a family and you play with the maximum player count of four and you just play for fun, you don't play to win, just play for fun, this is fantastic because then you can, as your kids get older, take it up a notch to the next level. Now the difference between Corridor Kid and Corridor is basically the size of the board. In Corridor Kid it's a 7x7 grid, whereas in Corridor, the original, it is a 9x9 grid. So there's a lot more blocking, a lot more strategy, and you can make really long labyrinths. And that's fun in itself, making labyrinths. And I think kids enjoy that as well. Just Again, that, that screw with your parent factor, which is great. Kids like to do over. I mean, we've played this a couple of times in the past couple of days with some new people, and it's great for the kids to like, yeah, I'm blocking you, and I'm blocking, I'm blocking a parent. I'm blocking, I'm blocking someone older than me. <laughs> I'm gonna win, I'm gonna win. And sometimes they do win, and, and that's great for them. That's a great sensation for them. This was a great sensation for you as a parent, you know, because sometimes they're their movement, their their placement of a piece may be totally random and, and screw over your strategy that you've, you've been plotting in an instant. But then again, the game plays in an instant as well. It's not a long-winded game. Obviously, when you play with more uh, older players who are really playing to win, the game can bog down with a bit of AP when you're anal analysing every single possibility you can do. Should you move? Should you block? Should you, you know, wait a few turns until they get closer to you, you so you can jump over them? There's all of these <laughs> very simple concepts and very simple ideas which make for quite a little challenging game. And I say little, it is little. Now let's talk about the components. Now, my edition is very, very special, so you're probably gonna find it very hard to find an edition like this, which has this really nice kind of asterisk book with everything fits in there nicely. Um, the only problem, as you can see from the, the video, the demonstration video that I was doing, is whenever I placed a wall in the holes with the pegs, it was a bit awkward, and sometimes they would fall when you're moving your pieces around. Now, how would that compare to a version that you can find commercially everywhere? I think you'll find that the version that you, you can buy in a shop will be a little bit more superior than this because Gigamic make really great components for their games. I own a couple of their games. I own uh, Colourpop, which has this wonderful rack with these wonderful counters, this really high quality. And also Tantrix, which is a tile game, but they're really nice solid plastic tiles. Fantastic. So um, the older version, the corridor version, is a nice big wooden board. I've seen it around and it has these slots which the walls sit in and then they don't move. And with the corridor kid version, it's pretty much the same. I, I think that all the components are plastic, so the board is plastic and the mice are plastic, but it looks really cute and adorable, doesn't it? So all I have to say now is thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it informative in that decision of whether this is a game for you and your family or not. And um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and look out for my next video. If you wish to help contribute towards my show, I have a Patreon set out. You can throw a few coins my way and maybe you can win yourself a gift in my raffle. And all I have left to say now is thank you very much again. Ciao for now. And uh, remember that you don't have to buy every single board game out there. You just need to own a few good ones. I play a Agricola, so long so you should go and buy it. It's hard to get food, which means someone has to die. Yeah. There's Arkham Horror, that's six hours of my life wasted. Cthulhu devours me, I wonder how great I've tasted.
Then there's pandemic. That's one game that I cannot be. There's not enough cards. That's why I have to cheat. I don't wanna play solo no more. I don't wanna play solo.